any interesting decision in, in software development, as in most things of life, is not a straightforward thing. There's many factors to take into account. You know, the old joke is, uh, you know, the answer to every question that you ask a consultant is, it depends. And that's true, because any interesting problem, the answer has to begin with, it depends. And then you wanted to make sure that people understand what it depends on. And they can make an informed decision saying, well, these are the factors I've got to take to account. This is the context I'm in, which is very individual to me, and I'm applying that to make a good decision. Our aim is to help people make good decisions. Well, when I first became CTO in roughly 2007, 2008, I felt it important that I had a group of technologists that could advise me. And so I formed this thing called the Technology Advisory Board. And one of the early questions we got from the organization was, what's the list of hot technologies that you'd like us to sell? And so we took one of the sessions of an early meeting of the TAB, the Technology Advisory Board, to sort of brainstorm what that list might look like. I can't remember exactly how things flowed, but we just had a fairly loose agenda in the first few meetings. And her TA at the time, technical assistant at the time, Darren Smith, um, came up with this idea of, well, we want to exchange lessons about what we're doing. What kinds of techniques are we using that we're finding is good? What kind of tools do we use that we find are good? Um, and he just came up with the idea of capturing that through this radar metaphor. He said, well, let, let's, let's think about this in, from the perspective of uh, technologies moving, becoming more critical. And then we came up with the quadrants to allow us to kind of organize the different technologies. And that's how the radar was born. So I think what's hard about representing the technology that you bring into the radar is Partly it's just really fast paced, right? So we do this every six months and there's just a lot of changes. The choices are becoming greater. And so trying to source that and also trying to get realistic advice about all of these different things. And I think that's where, as a consultancy, ThoughtWorks has an advantage over, say, a bank or a manufacturer because we work across banks and manufacturers. And we work in India and China and Brazil and Australia. And so we work around the globe as well. And so we can compare experiences with technology across domains, across technology stacks, across the globe. A lot of the traffic was dominated by vendors giving their spiel. And that was part of why we wanted the radar internally to say, no, this is what we've learned, and we wanted to be very much based on this is stuff that we've done, we've played with, we, and we don't have a bias of any kind particularly. Um, so, and we're going to tell it how we see it. We started out with languages, tools, techniques, and platforms. Relatively early, we, we morphed the languages to also include frameworks. So those are the four, uh, the four quadrants. And then we have an adopt ring, which is something that we are very confident should be considered a sensible default. It doesn't mean you should always use it because of course contexts differ and all the rest of it. But most of the time, given that kind of thing, you want to be using this. That's a significant step up from trial. The trial ring on the other hand, is for us a strong signal internally to tell teams, there are other teams in ThoughtWorks who have used this technology successful. It is not only opinion anymore, it is something that has proven itself and it doesn't, of course, work for all technologies, but the general rule of thumb is we have to have used it in production. If we try a technology and we play with it and we're unsure, we would actually leave it in the cess. And that's a little bit more like the Wild West. These are things that, well, gee, that looks interesting or this solves a real problem, but it could be very early. They might still be in beta. Um, we haven't really used it in anger on enough projects to have a really firm opinion about this. Um, but we think it's interesting. And we think it's got the potential to be something that could be important in the future. And then we have the hold ring. And the tab and now Doppler, the group that is currently creating the, the, the radar these days, they love the hold ring. This is where we tell people, you know, you really shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> So the hold ring, the, the official word is proceed with caution. This is something that we say, yeah, 
It's got some real flaws, and you've got to be careful about this. But it actually goes all the way to his, don't go anywhere near this with a 10-foot pole. Maybe it's because it's too new. Maybe it's because people just continue to not use things properly. Um, or maybe it's that we just don't think the approach is right at all. Um, and so that's the basic structure of the radar. And at some point or other, we decided, hey, we might as well make that public because Forworks' habit, very important to, to me and to all of us, is that we, we, don't, we, we, we give away our secret source. We tell everybody our secret source. Um, and so we said, hey, if we've discovered these really important, vital information about what we're doing on projects, let's tell everybody. So we did. See, ThoughtWorks stands for revolutionizing the technology industry, right? Uh, we have been at the forefront of the agile movement, DevOps, microservices, micro frontends, data mesh, you know. Thought workers are always the ones who are pushing the limit when it comes to embracing technology. Even when we were small, we thought we had something to offer in the way of this is how to create software more effectively, more efficiently, make it easier to maintain, have it deliver value more quickly. And the radar is one of the ways that we use to talk about how you do that. There's four key phases in creating the radar. The first one is the blip collection. The second one is the curation of the radar, where we reduce the amount of blips to the final count in the publication. The third one is the writing of the actual texts on the radar. And the fourth one then is production, which includes translation. And then we get it all packaged up, and then it launches. We have a radar. <laughs> So we get our submissions from everywhere. Um, and that, and we do that intentionally. So we do it in terms of like every region, every country. We try and get make sure that there's representation and that a session has been run or people have had the opportunity to submit. We also do some horizontal stuff as well, right? So we have like AI expertise and, you know, data platform expertise. We have um, you know, modernization and cloud expertise. We have front end and mobile, and um, and that, that's how we end up with the sheer volume of, of inputs. Then during the course of the meeting, the first stage in the meeting is to basically go through all of these blips one by one and say, okay, what do we think about this blip? The, the people who are have harvested the blip will describe what they know about it. People will offer their opinions. Sometimes somebody from another region will say, oh yeah, we've come across this. And, have some comments in there and back and forth, and we decide whether it goes on the radar or off the radar. Then once we've got the first pass, we're normally sitting then at around 130, 150 blips, and we want to get it down to about 100 for the radar. So the next stage is the culling. I should point out we have this very nice um, voting and discussion process where in order to speak, you raise your hand with a yellow with a yellow card in it to say, I want to speak, and Rebecca, who chairs the meeting, keeps note of the order, and we go through in sequence, and you're not expected to speak out of turn, which works really well because it allows the clock quite people to come out. Then when she calls for a vote, um, we have red cards and green cards. Green card means in favor, putting it on the radar. Red card means no. And then if you still feel we haven't talked enough about it and you want something to say more, you keep your yellow card up. And that's the kind of saying, no, I don't want to vote yet, I want to say more. So we do that both in the initial pass and then again in the cull, um, we will again do the same process. And then once we've done through the cull and we've got it closer to 100 to a more bearable level, we have a final stage, which is called the lifeboat. And that's where somebody had one of their blips, whether it was shot down in the beginning, whether it didn't survive the cull, but they get to, they get to give it a lifeboat and say, okay, let's try this one more time. Often it doesn't sway the room, uh, but sometimes it does. Okay, let's try a boat. Okay. Valiant effort. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we talked about it. I mean, the radar is opinionated, and even in a group of 20, roughly 20 technologists from ThoughtWorks who share common history, working for the same company, having the same process, getting the same input, we don't always come to the same conclusion. Sometimes it can be regional, because 
certain technologies are used differently in different regions, but sometimes it is also that the unique perspective that each person brings leads them based on the same facts to a different conclusion. There's a lot of respect in the room for each other as leaders. Um, and I think the thing that works about the way that we put this together is it goes back to that Strong Opinions Weekly held. So like people put a lot of effort into the research of the things that they want to represent um, and work on getting a succinct message across. There are many different ways to use the radar. As an individual, you can use it as a guide for your career development. As an organization, using our radar, again, is a guide to where should we be looking at leadership development, where should we be taking our technology stack, are there ways that we can improve the way our software development organizations work. Uh, but there's also something that we recommend for organizations, which is for them to build their own radar. And we have an open source package and lots of materials uh, that would allow organizations to do that. More so than the radar itself that comes out of the build your own radar process, uh, the discussion is where the real value is because now people understand why technology is the way it is in the organization, why people are pushing things in a, in a particular direction. What are the problems that we're trying to solve? So there are lots of different ways to use the radar. Um, even though it's just one document. As a CTO, uh, and as any technology leader will tell you, it is really hard to keep up with this industry. So for me personally, it's like a great opportunity at least twice a year to just find out what is going on on the ground with our development teams, what's working for them, what's not working for them, what they're struggling with, which may or may not turn into, you know, specific strategies that we have around capability or around you know, how we go to market. Um, and so that's really helped for me in, in my role. Another characteristic of, of the radar, though, that is important, given the proliferation of technologies, is we make no claims to be comprehensive. We cover the things that we have experienced with, the things that we have seen. Um, and so when you start to talk about something like AI, where there is so much hype out there, Having something that is vendor agnostic, platform agnostic, the only criteria for getting on the radar is for us to have something to say that we think will be useful to someone who is evaluating whether or not to use a particular tool, technology, platform. Any, anybody can put out how to, but I think it takes a lot of effort and nuance and experience to put out when and why. It's because we are extracting this from like 400 submissions from across the globe to filter it down after a bunch of conversations of about why and why not. If anybody were to know this process, that how democratic it is, how empowering it is for the people on the ground to be able to contribute, I think that's very important for me as a Doppler, for the rest of the world to know that we put in our heart and soul to make this artifact because we believe that it's important to share our experiences with the world and uh, revolutionize the technology industry.